Welcome back to the crack community. This is one of my top five favorite documentaries and you're about to see why. I saw it first back in 2004, 2005 when I was a student in an anthropology class. I just got out of the Marine Corps. I traveled the world and I've never seen anything like this. It really made me question this idea of culture and traditions. We have this notion that people should come here from other places and practice their traditions. However, after watching this documentary back then and even now, it really makes me question, do we really let people practice their traditions? Or do we let people, other cultures, practice traditions only if it aligns with kind of what we believe? Take, for instance, the quinceanera or a bar mitzvah. And I apologize right now if I mess those up. But if you take those, for example, they're coming of age traditions. And of course, this documentary has a coming of age tradition also. However, I question whether or not we would allow this tradition to happen in the United States. So what I want you to do in the comment section Type in, what do you think? Do you think we would allow something like this? Or how far do we go to allow or accept a tradition in the United States? And most importantly, is it up to the United States? Is it our job or anyone else's job for that matter to go into these different areas like these tribes up in New Guinea mountains? Um, is it our job or anyone else's job to suggest not to do these types of traditions for that culture. So go ahead, sit back, relax, enjoy it, and let me know what you think in the comments. High in the remote mountains of New Guinea live the Sambia people. With the modern world encroaching on their way of life, they've decided to reveal their secret rituals of initiation. The story tells of a sexuality very different from our own. Zambia legend recalls a great war hundreds of years ago. To escape the terrible conflict, a small band of warriors fled to these distant highland valleys where they built fortified villages in the rainforest. But they soon fell out with the neighboring tribes and war returned. Today, there are 2,000 Sambia people living in scattered villages, each based around a small group of families. All the villages are hostile and suspicious of one another. For as long as anyone can remember, the Sambia have been under the constant threat of attack. Beyond the rim of the valley, nowhere is safe. The Sambia must be vigilant and ready at any moment for war. Then I jammed it away, 
You don't want me to die out of my own. I'm probably not that. I'm not a blind girl. I'm not a blind girl. You don't want me to die out of my own. I'm not a blind girl. 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 I'm not a
For more than a year, the villagers prepare for the elaborate rituals and feasts that will take the boys into the secret world of the men's house. Ulaku and Yetuai's son, Bob, was initiated four years ago. This is the beginning of a boy's ritual journey that will last for months. From now on, he must live apart from his mother. Only when he becomes a father many years ahead will he return to live with women. Thrashing is the first of many painful surprises. It cleanses the boys' skins of their mother's polluting influence so that they can grow big and strong. Even after 30 years, the memory is still etched sharply in Ghana's mind. <laughs> Throughout the initiation, each boy is accompanied by a guardian. Thumping instills in the boys the first law of the tribe, which forbids adultery. By beating the fire, the women show a token defiance. They wish to keep their sons with them. But the men prevail. The boys will enter their world now, and this will be the mother's last meal with their sons. <laughs>
The boys are not allowed to see the flutes, whose special significance will only be revealed to them later. Rubbing the boys' bodies with the black palm ensures male growth and long life. The red headband anchors their soul to their body to protect them. Me all make mukola me me cry. Cause I'm pen la me all pen me I'm pen. I just me cry. The red flowers symbolize the polluting blood of women. From now on, nothing must weaken the warrior's will to fight. The passage symbolizes the vagina. The boys pass through it to be reborn as warriors. Wild ginger stems brand the boys with their male character. The stinging plants are far more powerful than nettles. The pain lasts for hours. This is a terrible last test of the boy's physical endurance. The elders impress on the boys how sacred the rituals are. With dire threats, should they ever betray their secrets. For several days, the boys have not eaten or slept. Now the elders chew leaves, strong male food from the forest, which the boys swallow to build up their masculinity. The boys may now wear the sporran of a young warrior for the first time.
The red juices of plants invoke the power of the sun to protect the boy's body and soul. Though they don't know it, they are ready at last to learn the greatest mystery of the men's society. The flute has a secret meaning. It symbolizes the penis. The boys must learn to suck the flute, for soon they will have to suck semen from the older boys. Semen is the essence of masculinity and vital to making warriors powerful and fearless. While the secret of the flutes is revealed to the boys, the women decorate the village dance ground with flowers of the wild impatiens. By crushing the petals, symbols of femininity, underfoot, the men and boys demonstrate their power over women. Inside the men's house, a final reminder to the boys to keep what they have seen secret. The flames erase the last trace of the secret flutes. The boys have begun a new life in the men's house. The Sambia want to show us their sacred rituals because they believe they may soon come to an end. But the secret of the flutes holds such power that the men still feel shame and fear when they talk about it. <laughs>
no idea. One, one time, Tessie? Shut up to give ya. Gilly, Jerry. Yay, and two. One, one time, that told me. I'm the chili you yet kitchen tinted. One, one time, that told me. I'm me chill point in more than me, you're an old one long. Nambich. The Sambia believe that boys are weak because they do not produce their own semen. Only by sucking men's semen will they become virile and brave. The boys grow up together. During the day, they hone their skills as archers and learn how to kill. At night, they swallow the men's semen. When the boys reach puberty at around 14, they return to the forest. Now they have semen to give. Instead of swallowing other men's, they supply their own to younger boys. The loss of their semen in this way is a worry, for it saps their strength. Teachings from ritual experts such as Ulaku help overcome their anxiety. <laughs> Traditionally, new warriors proved themselves by joining a raid on enemy territory. The strongest among them was expected to take one life and steal one woman. By means of these initiations and teachings, the Sambia have produced generations of men fierce enough to fend off any attack on their homes. But the warriors are not yet seen as complete men. For that, they must become fathers and return to the world of women. All night singing heralds the marriage ceremony. The men of the village gather to sing the bridegroom's song lines, the story of their lives. Since they were seven, the young men have lived apart from women, learning the arts of war and fearing female pollution. Tomorrow, they must face their new wives, picked for them from a neighboring but hostile village. The all-male singing is a support to the bridegrooms. Several couples will marry at the same time. 
The whole village dresses up and prepares for the feast that will follow. A pig has been slaughtered. Part of the bride price agreed between the couple's parents. For marriage is a strict social contract. The bridegrooms are anxious and must strengthen their bodies for the ordeal to come. Wiping the sporran symbolizes the cleansing of their penis. For the taboo on all things female is about to end. The wives are strangers from another village. By bending double, they show their deference to men and contain their sexual heat. They must not contaminate the virility of their young warrior husbands. When the women of her family accept the gift of pig meat, the contract is concluded. The bride will be treated as the man's property. She leaves her family and friends and moves to his village where married life begins. The couple continues with oral sex until the wife first menstruates often not before she's 17 or 18.
The Sambia believe that a woman's life parallels the flowers. When a girl is born, her womb is an unopened bud. She is most fertile as a young woman when the bud has just opened. She can receive a man's semen and produce many children. <laughs> For a man, fathering children is a duty. But sex with his wife is dangerous. He risks pollution from her vagina, even from the smell. Before sex, he uses strongly aromatic leaves to block out his wife's odor.
Only when his first child is born does a man finally stop giving semen to young boys and leave the men's house to join his family. But he has a new problem. As parents, a man and woman finally reach full adult status. For the first time, they live together under one roof. But the evidence of her fertility and power still troubles him. This painful ritual serves two purposes. It makes a man feel equal to a woman's fertility and it confirms his bravery as a warrior. Since the arrival of Europeans in 1963, Sambia life has begun to change. The church and the school have brought new ideas that shame and scorn the old customs. War is now uncommon. The strict social order is breaking down.
Young men no longer need to go to war, so the compelling force to initiate them is fast disappearing. The elders worry that the next generation will grow up weak and vulnerable. The younger people see new freedom to enjoy. This plan, I think, before yes, now things didn't do me all the same. Before only Papa he got house way round house. The he got Mark plan a man in when he come down and down long side from Mary. And now me play got square house na room one little so he me sleep one day. So now he me sense lick lick long. Thing house that so let make him plan a Mary one day man he me sleep one day. One day. Like from yet. Me like him, that's all. You know, got another plan story, or me talk, oh, that you married, no sleep all the more. That's the story, me no save long and me. Like, plum yet, me be any more. Suppose you got no person that's learned by story, or you, you by kissing, thinking, lo papa, mama, you can be any true long. Me like some say, or time, me stop long place, or. Person or Papa Mall's a work and me, Miss I look in the Miss a forehead. No, also I work straight and stop. Now mix and save, okay, me must stop low good low ways, me must stop low modern ways. Me must knock and walk and stop, me must write low paper as soon as stop. Na young life and me, me like to stop from me at time me young plan me stop and me and my master stop from me at na time me married and am hard work. Nema poe to ajam ma ngo dangil be nema poe to ko adam ngo dangil ma ngo poe nya poe nga. Anga jadi nak kita mana kita pun nak nganai. Anga jadi nak kau yang mana kita pun nganai kita nak kau pangkak kau yang. Ina kau dah nema dah poe ni 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 dah poe wana me anak kau pangkak juga. Angga and you talk straight. Now you go down long. Oh, you, you may lose him now. What will you him now? Then you play, you play, line here, you know, now, because him now.
I hope that you enjoyed that documentary as much as I did. And I hope it really opened your eyes. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more documentaries, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. You know what to do. Um, and if you're here because of my book, and yes, I've written a book where if you crack the code, you'll earn real Bitcoin. It's in a Bitcoin wallet. To find out more information about this book, click that link above. Um, and if you're here because of my book, uh, some people in the comments of my last documentary said that the hint was a little bit too difficult and that it probably was because it was actually a subliminal hint. But unlike last documentary, um, this one's not a subliminal hint. Uh, although some people did say that they got it uh, out of the last documentary. Um, so this one should be a little bit easier. I'm not sure. So go ahead and give it a watch. Let me know what you think. Anyway, good luck and I'll see you next time. Hi, hi, hi.